So we covered the summary tab in the last video. Let's now drill in and take a look at the other views that are available in the reports. The various views here let you do different things, right? The timeline report lets you overlay different key performance indicators onto a single graph, right? So rather than look at, uh, at metrics for, say, the response time for all of the different transactions, we could say, well, I want to look at the individual transactions separately, right? I want to see how purchase flight versus fine flights versus chooses flight fared. And it's quite different, right? We can see that the the, uh, the purchase flight took quite a bit longer. These guys were much slower. So we can kind of tease more more value out of the data. Now, if you had uh, APM integration here, if you're integrating with Dynatrace or AppDynamics or, or CAAPM uh, or, or Amazon CloudWatch, you could overlay that same data on this graph, right? So that you could see this data in, in sequence. Now, if you'd rather look at the data in a tabular way, we have the request statistics. And what request statistics let you do is look at things like percentiles. Percentiles help help to, to sort of unhide the hidden bits. When 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 there's fast responses and slow responses, averages tend to be kind of just fine. But uh, percentiles let you be a little more picky. We can see the average response time was uh, 2.8 seconds. Um, uh, but if we look at the 90th percentile, or the 95th, or the 99th, we can see that the times are much higher. And the way we get to a 95th percentile is we basically take all the response times, we line them up in order, and we take the 5% worst response times, and that next response time, that's the 95th percentile, right? So this request stats lets us see these percentiles, lets us see minimums and maximums, lets us see the error counts, the error percentages. We can configure what shows up in this table. We can also filter which labels, which sections of our test are shown in this table if we wanted to. And from the same screen, we can download a CSV that contains all the rows, all the fields for all the stuff. So you can basically get the entire tabular data as a CSV if you want. Now to get a closer look at the errors that we saw, we can go to the errors view, right? And in this case, this particular report didn't have any errors. So let's jump over to one that did really quick so we can see what errors look like, right? So when we go to the errors tab, um, we can sort these, we can group them rather by, by the label, which is the portion of the test, by the response code we got. Or if we've used assertions where we're actually validating that we got responses we want, we could, we could uh, group them by the assertion name. In this case, we can see that, that the, the issue here was that um, we overloaded the server, and so the, the load balancer failed to respond. Uh, the other one is really a similar error, which is basically connection timing out, right? So this would let us drill into the, the errors a little bit uh, better. Now, now is a good time to kind of look at how these various views can be synchronized. If I go back to the timeline report, I could say, you know what, I'm really curious what our first batch of errors were. So I'm just going to look at this little bit here, right? And now I've zoomed into a portion of the test, and if I go to the request stats, I'm going to see that I'm actually viewing just that subset of the test, and these statistics are just for that subset of the test, and our errors uh, report over here, likewise, is just going to have the six errors we got during that section, right? So um, it's just a common sense thing. You might want to look at a certain part of your test, and we keep the, the uh, timeline, the request stats, and the errors in sync for you when you do that. And for many of these, we could just hit reset, um, and we'll zoom out to the, to the full test interval, right? Now, if your test used complex logic, something that uses a lot of memory, a lot of CPU when the test is running, you might run the risk of overloading the, test, the load generators themselves um, rather than your target, right? And you want to know that rather than thinking your target is slowing down. And that's the purpose behind the engine health. So engine health lets you see for the load generators that are out there what is the memory and CPU and connections and bandwidth that each one of them is, is consuming. And we can see that this guy here, um, you know, CPU was very quiet. Uh, the, uh, the connections count got up to 181, but, you know, this was this server was doing fine, right? So this is not the bottleneck. So, But that's the engine health idea that, that lets you make sure that you're getting a valid test at a glance. You can quickly come here, take a look, make sure everything is okay. Now, all the views we've just seen can easily be shared with anyone. If I just go up here and I say share report, I can generate an anonymous URL. They don't need a BlazeMeter account. Someone with a BlazeMeter account, without a BlazeMeter account, you can send them this URL and they can view all the tabs we've just seen. It's sort of a read-only view to the report. They can't launch another test. They can't see the logs. They can't see the scripts. But they can see all the reports that, that you and I have just seen, right? And I can turn off that sharing and that URL becomes invalid. If I turn it on again, I generate yet another token so that this 
new URL is the only one that works, right? So if I've shared it with somebody and then I've turned it off and I want to share it with somebody else, I'm not like allowing lots and lots of people to have access. I'm controlling who gets access at any one given time, right? So that's sharing. Now before we leave this individual test run we're looking at here, let's take a look at what's on the, the logs tab, right? Um, the, the idea here is that we want to be able to very easily download all of the artifacts from this test. So it, even, I may be looking at this minutes after it runs, uh, days or weeks or months after it runs, but I can get my hands on exactly what script was used, exactly what configuration was used, and what were the logs, what were the logs with the errors have, what did the regular output have, so I can I can download that anytime I want. It's all archived for me right there in the same context as a report. No mystery in finding those materials, right? The last thing we want to take a quick look at is what's on the original test configuration tab, right? This is a snapshot of the test configuration. Again, I might be looking at this while the test is running, minutes after it runs, or I might be running it, looking at it days or weeks later, right? This lets us see um, what the exact configuration of the test run was at a glance, whether I used any different variables or had settings a certain way. Um, and that way, um, I can, because I may run this test multiple times, right? I might want to make sure uh, what the scenario was here. So I can get, I can get that from the original test configuration.